All right. Good morning, everybody. Happy September. Uh, today is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, and I'm so glad you found us to worship with us this morning. It is a beautiful morning in sunny Deerfield, Illinois. So whether you are with us on Zoom, if you've found us on Facebook or live streaming on our website, or if you're watching us recorded on YouTube, we welcome you. We are so glad you are with us to worship this morning. We are better when we worship together. So it's so good to be worshiping. Our worship is participatory. So we all participate in this worship. We breathe in and out the spirit together. We say together holy words that have been said for centuries and occasionally millennia. And we pray together wherever we are and hold each other in community. We work together to live lives of faith supported by community. And this is the one of the ways that we do that. So the bolded words on the screen are yours when you're participating at home. We also invite everybody to sing along when we have our hymns and songs of praise that we sing along at home, make a joyful noise unto the Lord uh, and participate together. Our worship this morning, um, our music this morning is covered under our CCLI license for performance and streaming. Before we begin, before we enter into the active part of our worship this morning, I'm going to invite us to take just a moment of quiet. If you can, put both feet on the ground so we can ground ourselves in God's beautiful creation and remind ourselves we are here in this moment together. I invite you to breathe in and out deeply, breathing in the Holy Spirit and setting aside any cares or worries or anxieties you've brought with us to this place. And just, just take a moment to be still and know that God is God and we are not, and to give thanks for that. Center together in the power of the Spirit. We continue our worship together this morning. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing to your name, O Most High. God, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Holy God, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you, holy God, 
Forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Holy God, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Holy God, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your son. Holy God, forgive us. Save us and help us. Beloved ones, may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins and raise you to new life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Deep. Oh. <laughs> Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. Let us read together Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but stands fast forever. The hills stand about Jerusalem. So does the Lord stand round about his people from this time forth forevermore. The scepter of the wicked shall not hold sway over the land allotted to the just, so that the just shall not put their hands to evil. Show your goodness, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are true of heart. As for those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with the evildoers. But peace be upon Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fail. Those who are generous are blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Do not rob the poor because they are poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate, for the Lord pleads their cause and despoils of life those who despoil them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, lift up your voice, sing hallelujah. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, lift up your voice, hallelujah. Shout and rejoice, give praise to the Lord, sing with jubilation. Let all the earth now cry out with joy and raise our hymn of exultation. Exultation, clap your hands, hallelujah, clap your hands, hallelujah, clap, oh, clap your hands. Hallelujah. A reading from the letter of James. My brothers and sisters, do you, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe 
in the glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes to your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while the one who is poor, you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blasphemed the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What, is, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks food daily, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To Mark. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee, in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When we describe Jesus to someone, words that come to mind might include loving, healing, caring, compassionate, concerned, merciful. But someone encountering Jesus for the first time in today's gospel might see Jesus quite differently. Abrupt, dismissive, rude. Our gospel this morning points a disturbing and uncharacteristic picture of Jesus. It's a story that causes many preachers to shy away, to preach on the Old Testament lesson this morning instead. 
So what is today's unusual gospel all about? And what meaning does it have for each one of us today? Our story begins with an exhausted Jesus, trying to get away for a few days to be alone and to rest and to pray. And like any celebrity, he goes where he's not known, where he's not likely to be recognized and where he'll be left alone. He goes to Tyre, an ancient city near the Mediterranean Sea in what is now Lebanon, about 40 miles or so from Capernaum, a long day's hike to be sure. Tyre was inhabited by non-Jews who weren't expected to know about Jesus or his teaching. And so Jesus assumed he wouldn't be recognized there, that he could get some downtime. Yet almost immediately, he encounters a woman who just won't leave him alone. To any Jew, she would certainly have been considered unclean, a Gentile living outside of Israel, outside the law of Moses, and additionally being unacceptable since she was not accompanied by a husband. She was someone to whom no Jew would ever speak. And yet this woman initiates a conversation with Jesus, an apparent stranger. And most of us would find Jesus's reply to be both unexpected and out of character. He rebuffs the woman. Let the children be fed first, for it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Commentators have tried to excuse Jesus's response by suggesting that his reference to dogs was actually an affectionate term, meaning puppies, or that he might have been using a now forgotten Jewish idiom that didn't actually refer to dogs at all, similar to our expression, let sleeping dogs lie. Both explanations are unforgiving. A better explanation suggests that he was expressing how he felt called to serve the people of Israel, that they were the limits of his mission and ministry, and that his time had not yet come to serve beyond those limits. In spite of any explanation we might suggest, his words come across clearly as asking the woman, go away. But she was not about to take no for an answer. Her persistent response indicates that she didn't expect a seat at the table, but she was asking for God's leftovers, a crumb or two of mercy on behalf of her suffering daughter. She continued to plead her case, insisting that in reality, both Jews and Gentiles are actually in the same boat. Both groups are equally sinful and deceitful. So why should Gentiles, she pleaded, have to wait for, to participate in the blessings made possible by Israel's God? Jesus seems to have taken her words to heart, for he reconsiders his response. Some might even say that Jesus changed his mind. He realizes that the woman understands the abundance of God's mercy. And just like the feeding of the 5,000, there will be abundant leftovers. And so after hearing the woman's challenge, Jesus now agrees that God's love and healing powers know no ethnic, political, or social boundaries. In the next section of today's gospel, Jesus is heading back toward the Decapolis, another Gentile territory. One can only wonder if he is still trying to escape to a place of quiet rest, or if he now has a new vision of his ministry beyond the borders of the Jewish people and his own territory. The gospel ends with Jesus healing a deaf man, an outsider just like the woman's daughter, cut off even from his own world by his inability to hear and to communicate with others. It should also be noted that unlike any of his other miraculous healings, Jesus tells neither the Syrophoenician woman nor the deaf man that it is their faith that has restored healing and wholeness. What these two 
healing stories have in common. And the actual point of today's gospel is the problem of exclusion. The demon-filled daughter and the deaf man were both being excluded from their communities and thus forced to live on the margins of society. We find a number of their counterparts, counterparts in our world today. Too many people find themselves on the margins, excluded from their communities in which status, privilege, and even the right to a full and satisfying life are determined by class, race, gender, economics, and sexual identity. And so today's gospel challenges us to recognize and work to dismantle the barriers that exclude. And one of the core barriers of our society that is used to exclude and discriminate against others is privilege. Most of us take privilege for granted. And so the first task we face is to recognize the ways in which we are indeed privileged, yet fail to even recognize our unspoken advantages. I once attended a workshop titled Dismantling Racism given by the Episcopal Diocese of Chicago. When I went to the workshop, I already understood male privilege because I'd had to confront that in academia and even in the church. I'd experienced discrimination in housing and trying to obtain credit cards as a single mother. But that workshop opened my eyes to the many ways in which I had been totally unaware of privileges that I had taken for granted. I have never feared for a son's life if he were stopped by a police officer because of a broken taillight. I have never faced embarrassment in a dress shop being followed by a salesperson to make sure that I didn't shoplift some article of apparel. I have never had to enter a school or fitness center unsure whether or not I would be able to enter the locker room of my choice. Today's gospel calls us to hear the Syrophoenician woman's voice in our world, pleading for those suffering from homelessness in our neighborhoods, pleading for the young lives being killed on our city streets, pleading for the children who go to school hungry. Jesus did not ignore the woman's pleas and neither can you or I. We too are called to respond to her persistent cries for those in our midst who are being excluded. For whom is she pleading in our own community? What is she pleading for us to do for them? How will we respond? Please join me in reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on, on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Grant us courage and good companions, humor and humility. We are thankful for this gathering, for the joys of life, for faithful friends and unexpected surprises. In the chat, offer your prayers of joy and gratitude. We offer our prayers of gratitude for visits from mom, for a surprise visit from daughter, for time with family, for sunny skies, for three-day weekends, for family and friends, for flowers, for mowing the lawn, for pets, for volunteer pumpkins growing in our patch, for donuts, indeed. The return of football for Meredith's sermon and Meredith's ministry among us in general. For all of these joys and so many more named and unnamed, O oh God of abundant love and mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for your mission in our communities and throughout the world. Open our eyes to see you at work in people policies, and places. Open the hearts of leaders of all communities and nations to be filled with your peace and love. Offer your prayers for our community, the nation, and the world. We pray for our leaders, especially Joe and Kamala, for the St. Jesus community, for strength for our healthcare workers and all frontline workers, for those living on the fringes, for the victims of fire and storms, for sound decision helping those in need throughout the world, for people in Afghanistan, Haiti, Minneapolis, New Orleans, New York and New Jersey, all those who have been in the path of storms. For all these and more, O oh God of abundant love and mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Many among us are hurting in ways that are known and in ways that are unknown to us. We pray for all who suffer and for those who care for them with skill and compassion. Offer your prayers for the sick, sad, lonely, and afraid. Morning, we pray especially for Taylor, for Catherine, for Leanne, Scott, Suzanne, Leslie, Carl, Robert, Donna, for the Clara family, for Barbara, Carol, Karen, Patrick, Devin, Sandy, Paula, Rob, Andrew, Jack. Ron and Bob. For Jane. Pray for safety of families for visits for C. Continued safety of family and upcoming visits this month. For all of these and all the prayers in our hearts and minds, O God of abundant love and mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died and are now in their eternal home with you and the hosts of heaven. We offer your prayers for those who have died, those who are dying, and those who are mourning. Pray especially for Charlie. Dot. Chris, Leanne, Enid, Amelia, Clark, Mike, Chris.
Chris. Vic. Jan. For all of those saints who have gone before us, so God of abundant love and mercy. Hear our prayer. We also pray for birthdays, anniversaries, and travels this week. Do we have people celebrating this? Birthdays, anniversaries, travelers. Jack is traveling and will be driving. Elizabeth and Scott Hamilton's 34th anniversary, September 4th. I know Mike and Paula Hamilton have an anniversary today. Val Evan is, is having a trip to the Forest of Dean, which sounds very cool. Gracie's 26th birthday. Happy birthday, Grace. All right, let us pray. Then Jack's 16th birthday, his mom's travels. Linda, since she's having a birthday. All right, well then let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Linda and Jack and Grace, that you surround them with your angels, that you lift them should they fall, that you give them strength and confidence as they go through their lives you've called them to do, and that you hold them and allow them to continue to grow in grace and strength and wisdom with you. We also give thanks for those celebrating anniversaries this week, especially Elizabeth and Scott Hamilton, Mike and Paula Hamilton, and Ann and David, um, that all of these couples may be drawn closer together as they draw closer to you, that they may remember and reflect on the sacrament that they entered into with you, may honor and cherish that, and may serve you and to love others in your name. And we pray for those who are traveling this week. Uh, especially uh, Julia's mom, uh, Val, who is traveling, Jack, who will be driving for all of these. We pray that you surround them with your angels and keep them safe, that their travels will bring them rest and recreation, and that they will be able to return and serve you as you have called them to do in this world. Amen. Happy birthday, happy anniversary, and safe travels, everyone. The peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. With you. Peace. 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 Beloved, at this time, we give thanks for you who have offered generously of the resources that you had to enable St. Gregory's to help building community of people living in faith together in this world. Uh, we give thanks for you who've been able to do that. We invite you, if you have not done so this week, to go to stjeschurch.org and to give as generously as you can financially so that we continue to serve uh, God and others in this community and the world. You can give to our general operations so that we can continue to do ministries. You can also give specifically to food pantries. This is the first Sunday of the month. And normally on the first Sunday of the month, we strive to give you the amount that we gave last month uh, to the food pantries. I do not have that because we didn't have a full week this week um, and weren't able to get that number, but hopefully we will have it next week. You can also give to the Rector's Discretionary Fund, which is almost always used for people who are having housing insecurity and are struggling with that. And so, beloved, I invite you to give generously as you can as we pray to God and remind and remember, dear God, that all things are a gift from you and all that we give to you was yours already.
Prayer for sending. Lord, let us walk into this day. Your light before us. Your shield behind us. Your friends beside us. Beside us. Lord, let us walk into this week. Your life for us. Your strength behind us. Your love around us. Love around us. Lord, let us walk from this place. Your wisdom before us. Your truth behind us. Your breath within us. Lord, let us walk into the world. Gratitude in our hearts. Thanksgiving on our lips. And joy in our spirits. Beloved ones, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. We will. Thanks be to God. Uh, so we have this Friday, food truck Friday and Friday night lit flick, Friday night flicks, Friday night flicks, both happening. Very exciting Friday. 5 p.m. We have Cheesy's food truck. This is the gourmet grilled cheese sandwiches. There is a menu up. I believe it's on our website. I know it's on Facebook. So you can start drooling over which grilled cheese delectability you are going to come and consume on Friday evening in our parking lot. Tell friends, tell family, tell everybody you know, uh, because we do pay for these food trucks up front. Uh, so we're going to pay for it whether people eat them or not. So y'all come on. The menu is on the website. They look amazing. I want them all. Um, so come on out and have food food from the food truck at five and then stay for Sister Act. It's a cheesy movie for cheesy food. Get it? Uh, stay for Sister Act. It's a fun one. Great songs to sing. Whoopee. It's awesome. So stay for the movie after the food truck. It'll be fun. And to spotlight uh, ministries, which we are trying to do each week, spotlight opportunities for us to serve the greater community. I invite you to consider the pumpkin opportunities which are coming up. Uh, we have need for pumpkin patch set up. Uh, we, the pumpkins are coming on 926. And so we need to set oh, up. Oh, the they are coming on 925. That's what I thought. I yes, thought they are coming 925. on 925. Yes. Thank you, Sorry, Shelley. Guys. That's like, I don't trust my brain, but I thought that's me. what it thought. Sorry. <laughs> All good. All right. So they're coming on the 25th. Uh, pay no attention to what you see in front of you. Uh, but we do need to set up the patch. We have a big tent that has to be put up. We need to put lights on trees and decorate the patch with the photo opportunities, hay mail, hay mails. <laughs> hay bales and all sorts of things. So we need lots of people to help do that. Pumpkin unloading, as you know, takes a lot of hands. This is gonna be uh, two to three hours. Uh, Shelly, what time is the food truck supposed to, uh, the, food truck, the pumpkin truck supposed to arrive on September the 25th? 
God willing, and the creek don't rise, it will get there at 11 o'clock. All right. So ish, uh, the truck will come. We are getting a full tractor trailer of pumpkins this year. Not a partial, but a full tractor trailer of pumpkins. Uh, we do have, uh, thanks to Shelly for coordinating again, we have the guys from the Sober Living community coming to get in the truck to unload because once again, we find ourselves in a need to stay masked situation. So the guys who are living together are going to get in the truck to do the unloading. We have the uh, front end loaders coming to take the things off the truck and move them to places in the patch, which is amazing from the park district and the village. Uh, which is phenomenal. So that is all great, but we need lots of people to come. We are asking that everybody who comes remains masked, even though we are outside, we'll be in close proximity with each other. And because of the Delta variant, we are trying to use an abundance of caution. We need somebody to organize food. This is a simple thing. You do not have to come to the patch to do this. You can do this from your very own lounge chair at home in your pajamas. You could uh, order pizzas and things, and then you could coordinate people who could be on site to pick up drinks and ice and snacks. Uh, so somebody could coordinate all of that, get people to help pick up the things if you wanted to, uh, or you could actually physically do it all yourself. But we need people to do these things because we need food and ice and drinks and tables and chairs picked up. Um, and then obviously we need people to help with the cleanup after we unload the truck. The truck has to be swept out. We have to throw away rotten pumpkins and extra boxes. This doesn't take a ton of time, but we do need somebody who's willing to stay after the unloading to do these things. Um, it's extra work that has to be done. Also, we need people to sign up for pumpkin patch shifts. A pumpkin patch shift is two hours in the patch. You sit in the patch and you sell pumpkins. You talk to our neighbors who come by, you get to know the community. We are the primary faces of our community to the world when we sit in the pumpkin patch. And it takes 246 pumpkin patch shifts to run a pumpkin patch. 246 pumpkin patch shifts to run a pumpkin patch. Is that sinking into our bodies and hearts and souls? Um, Shelly Burns cannot be the only person who sits in the pumpkin patch. It takes 246 shifts uh, to sit in the pumpkin patch. And there are currently 37 devices signed on here. Meredith Potter is way better at that sort of thing off the cuff than I am. But that would mean that we would all need to work a lot of shifts, uh, six to seven, I guess, uh, to do if all of us signed up for shifts to run the thing. Uh, so really and truly, we do need you to go ahead and sign up for pumpkin patch shift to sign up to unload the pumpkin and to do these things. It, it takes this amount of work to do this one thing that we are most known for in our community. Um, so we all need to participate and help out and do this wonderful community facing event. And this year, all of the proceeds uh, that we make are going to go to the food pantries. We've decided uh, to not keep any of this money. It's all going to the food pantries. Uh, so it's excellent causes. And we invite you to come out and help raise money for them and to let the community know how much we love them and care for them. And it's coffee hour time. Before we go to coffee hour, I want to extend a special thanks to Meredith Potter, who at the very last minute uh, agreed to preach and to handle the eight o'clock service this morning. I have had contact with somebody who tested positive for COVID. And so out of an abundance of caution, I did not want to be doing the service on site this morning and be face to face with people uh, and be on site. And so Meredith jumped in at the very last minute and preached in a phenomenal sermon. So I am very, very grateful for her ministry among us. So those of you who have joined us online, thank you. We look forward to seeing you again next Sunday and probably Friday night for Cheesy's Food Truck and Movies. And for those of you who